another really cool integral that stands absolutely no chance against us. So let's call this integral i, and we're going to evaluate the integral using Feynman's technique. And yes, everyone knows it's called the Leibniz rule as well. So yes, everybody knows that. Anyway, to define our integral function, we're going to have to place a parameter t somewhere in the function we're integrating. So where exactly should I place this parameter t? Sorry about that. So where exactly should one place the parameter t? Well, let's go for the most obvious choice first and place it as part of the argument of the, of the uh, sine function. So now to differentiate with respect to this parameter t, you can now switch up the differentiation and the uh, integration operators. And once you perform the switch up, the total derivative with respect to t now becomes a partial derivative with respect to t. So you're differentiating partially with respect to t, meaning that the, x, uh, the x's here are constants. So that means this x squared term here is just a constant multiple. So you have the integral from negative to positive infinity of 1 by x squared times the derivative of this function of t using the power rule is 2 times sine tx times the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. And of course, you have to use the chain rule and differentiate the argument as well. So uh, upon differentiation, uh, because x is a constant here, uh, you're just going to get x because the derivative of t with respect to itself is 1, of course. And that does a handy job of just canceling out one of the x's in the denominator. So the derivative of i with respect to the parameter t is the integral from negative to positive infinity of 2 times sine tx times the cosine tx divided by x. And we're uh, differentiating with respect to x, of course. And now take note of something very useful here. The expression up here, 2 times the sine of something times the cosine of that something, is just the double angle formula for the sine function. So this is in fact sine of 2tx. So you can write it as the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine 2tx divided by x with respect to x. And now I'm going to perform a substitution that will make life a lot easier for us. So let 2tx equal to, what should I let it equal to? Sigma, small sigma. So this implies that dx equals 1 by 2 times t times d sigma. And the limits of integration are going to remain exactly the same, correct? So this implies that i prime of t equals the integral from negative to positive infinity. And you have this uh, 1 by 2 t term outside. And up here, upstairs, you have sine of um, sine of sigma divided by... Now, what is x over here? Well, x, according to our substitution, is sigma divided by 2 t. That's what x equals. So sigma divided by 2 times t. And we're integrating with respect to sigma now. Now, these terms cancel out. And you're left with the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine of sigma divided by sigma with respect to sigma. And we all know what this is, right? This is the old... Dirichlet integral that I've already evaluated in a previous video, link in the description below. Now, the Dirichlet integral evaluates to pi with these limits of negative to positive infinity. So the derivative of i with respect to t is just a constant pi. And now to recover the function i from its derivative, we have to integrate with respect to t. And integrating pi with respect to t is just going to yield pi times t plus that constant of integration that we have to determine. Now, how to determine the constant of integration in this case? Well, let's look back at our integral function. i of t equals the negative, uh, the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine 2tx. Uh, wait, 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 wait. It was sine squared tx divided by x squared. So if I plug in t equal equal to zero, I have sine square, uh, I have the square of the sine of zero, which is zero. So the entire integral reduces to zero. So that's a pretty useful in initial condition. So I know that on plugging t equals zero, I get 
0 equals pi times 0, 0 plus c, which implies that the constant of integration is in fact 0. So this implies that the integral function i of t is pi times t. And we were interested in the case where t equals 1, correct? So this implies that the integral i, which is the integral from a uh, negative to positive infinity of the square of the sine of x divided by x squared equals pi, which is exactly the same answer as you get with the Dirichlet integral. So the Dirichlet integral and this squared cousin of the Dirichlet integral both evaluate to pi. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.